Hi guys, welcome back. I am Red Zed, and today we're bringing you a brand new video on the Seleucids in RIS for Rome Total War Remastered. But today is not a campaign video, it is a guide for all you guys out there who want a guide for this glorious, and in fact my favourite, faction in Rome Total War and RIS. Now it is a fantastic faction to play, but if you are a beginner or finding this game hard, Seleucids are not for you. This is a guide for all those who are experienced players who want a little bit of a challenge um, or players who are starting to get good at the game and want to improve their gameplay. Play as the Seleucids. It's a difficult, difficult nation to play, but we'll get into that in a little bit. So the way this is going to work, we're going to go through my RAS tips to start with. Then we'll talk about the unit roster, the building roster, and then we'll talk about the starting moves as the Seleucids and the later moves you want to take, all in chapters down below. And of course, you can watch my Seleucid campaign in the description down below to see how I did it. But always remember, play based on the RNG you get. Do not try and copy exactly the moves I did because it won't work out exactly the same. Right then, guys, let's talk about my RAS tips and tricks, firstly. Now, my first tip is to go for the difficulty that is best for you, of course. This is something that I get commented a lot. People complaining about the difficulty of RIS. Now, the people that complain about this difficulty generally don't ever want to concede and go down to easy difficulty. Who's going to know, guys? RAS is difficult. It is more difficult than vanilla by multiple factors. It is very, very difficult compared to vanilla. But for someone who's played a lot of mods on Total War games, you'll probably find the difficulty absolutely fine for you. However, if you're not that experienced, you might be finding it quite hard. Just go down the difficulties until you find the right difficulty for you. There's no shame, guys, in playing on easy. There's no shame in playing on easy. If you have to play on easy, do it. No one's watching. No one cares. It is there for your enjoyment. And if you are not enjoying the game because you cannot play it, because it's too difficult, uh, you're not quite skilled enough yet, then just play on an easier difficulty. No problem whatsoever. So my second tip, guys, is be aggressive first. Be the one to be aggressive. Do not let the AI be aggressive to you. Because you may not know this, but you actually do have a brain inside of your head. And that is infinitely more powerful than whatever the computer has going on in its circuits. I can tell you that for free. Your brain is much more powerful than theirs. So use it and be aggressive first. Go and bully the AI. This is important for any RIS campaign that you want to do. Do not let the AI be aggressive to you. Do not be on the offensive. Go and be offensive. Go and be attacking. Go and take lands and take nations before they can start to bully you. Because the AI will build up its forces and will be able to bully you unless you stamp them out early. So that is my second tip. Now let's talk about my third tip is to build economic buildings and use all of your money on the first turn. So, when you start the game, as you can see with the Seleucids, you're minus 30,000. Sort your economy out straight away. Not necessarily just for the Seleucids, for anyone. And build economic buildings, predominantly farmlands at the start of the game, before you move on to trade later on. But those are my tips for RAS, guys. So now let's move on to the unit roster of the Seleucids. Hi guys, here we are on the battlefield with our full unit roster of normal units, none of the AOR units. And as you can see, we have our non-reform units over here and our reform units after the reforms over on the left-hand side looking at it this way. Um, and you do have a very strong roster, one of the most versatile and strongest rosters available in the whole game. It is a fantastic roster and you want to use it to the best of your abilities. When you start, you're going to be starting very early on with both the Greek Hoplites and the Theroporoi. One thing to note, guys, as I'm speaking about this, I 
have done a full, very in-depth video on the Seleucid unit roster. They'll be down in the description down below. So check that out if you want this in more depth. But I'm just going to be going over it quickly here today. And that is why I'm going over it quickly as well. Uh, but you start with the Greek Hoplites and Theroporoi. These are the first couple of units you're going to be able to recruit. And they are pretty decent. Decent units. And you can choose which one you want to use. The Theroporoi... Slightly worse defense, but they've got those two Javis to throw into the enemy. Whereas the Greek Hoplites, a little bit more defense, uh, a little bit more attack, but of course they don't have the Javis. So use those guys in whichever way possible. I personally kind of prefer the Hoplites, but yeah, it's, it, it's, they're very, very similar. And then the next sort of unit after that that you're going to get when you get to minor city level is the Seleucid Chalka Speed as your first proper... Uh, phalanx unit and these guys are great a great mid-tier phalanx unit 36 defense 18 melee attack and it's honestly very likely that the enemies that you're fighting are not going to be recruiting these guys early on so if you can get them early you will be doing huge amounts of damage and then we can see we also have the hypastists the thoracitae and the agira speeders the agira speeders are a very good elite phalanx unit if you can get to that level and recruit these guys, they're going to be very, very, very strong, especially early game. But I would suggest that all three of these, the uh, Hypastis, the Thoracitae, and the Agira Speeders, you're very unlikely to be able to get a lot of them before you get to the reforms, which happens at either 200 BC or 100 turns in, I believe. One of those two different options. Um... But again, they are very strong, these elite units. If you can get them, the Thoracitae, just a better version of the Theroporoi, uh, you can see. But the Hypastis, a very strong elite Spearman unit. And the Agira Speeders, very strong elite Phalanx unit. If you can get them, well done. They will be fantastic. You get your standard Slingers and your Peltas, etc. All pretty decent. I'd say the best option here is the Greek Archers. Uh, the Greek Peltas are a good Peltas unit, but for me personally, I just don't like Javelin units. They're not really something that I enjoy using. So I would go for the Greek Archers every time over those guys. Uh, but that is just me. In terms of the cavalry, of course, you have your Prodromoi, your worst level of cavalry. Would not recommend getting these guys if you can help it, uh, but you do start with a few. Uh, but the Zistophori, a very decent mid-tier heavy cavalry unit. They're quite slow in terms of their movement compared to, say, the Prodromoi. However, they will do a lot of damage, especially on the charge. Um, but then you get your Hetairoi, your companion cavalry. They are fantastic units. If you can get these guys, they are going to be shredding through the enemy. And you also get access to some scythe chariots. The strongest chariots, I would say, in the game are the scythe chariots, which you can get as Pontus or the Seleucids. And they are incredibly strong. They have eight hit points, guys, with 18 defense. Um, so you pretty much get about 144 um, 144 defense on these boys, which is pretty strong, and they destroy enemy morale. Now, let's have a look at our post-reform units. We get the, uh, crisis, uh, crisis speed as the bronze shields, or the gold shields, I, either one of those, I can't remember, I think it's the bronze shields, uh, a decent enough uh, phalanx unit, but they're actually not quite as good as your uh, Chalka Speeders, as we can see. So I probably wouldn't be recruiting those if I had the chance. I would recruit the Chalka Speeders uh, the Chalka Speeders instead. You also get the Agira Speeders, a very, very strong sword unit. This would be your flanking unit. Very good indeed. I'd use that if I could post reform as my flanking unit. Also with the Javis. Heavy assault infantry, pretty much. Then you also get the Neocretan archers. Fantastic archer unit. If you can get these after the reforms, replace all your Greek archers with them because they are a fantastic unit. We also, of course, get the cataphracts. The tanks on the battlefield. Get these guys. Very good. I don't think I really need to say much about cataphracts uh, because they're fantastic. The Roperoi cavalry. Um, again, not a fan of missile cavalry, but they are a lot better than the Prodromoi. Uh, they're just, unfortunately for me, they are a uh, missile cavalry unit, which I'm not a fan of. Uh, I mean, obviously non-horse archer missile cavalry. Also, why is there a little boat hat on the, on this map? Like, look. <laughs> it's just here. Hello. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but it's there. You can actually kind of stand on it. That's quite funny. Um, 
And then you also get access to your Indian War Elephants, of course, absolutely beastly units if you can get these guys. Fantastic unit, gonna smash enemies to pieces, really, really good. So, your unit roster, like I said, very versatile, very strong. Early game, you're going to be focusing either on the Theroporoi Greek Hoplites, and when you can, start mixing in the Chalka Speeders. It's nice to have a bit of a mix, I think, I feel, because the AI doesn't like to attack Chalka Speeders head-on, so they'll do everything they can to kind of avoid them. So if you have a few of these guys mixed in your line as well, they might actually come on and attack your line. Early game as well, start getting the uh, Zistafori, going to do really, really well. Uh, and late game, transition your spear and sword units into the Agira Speeders. And when you can, start getting uh, your uh, Agira Speeders Phalanx men, and you will do fantastically. A great unit roster, and like I said, you can see a more detailed one down in the description below. Now, without further ado, guys, let's get on to the building roster. So here we are guys, let's talk about the building roster of the Seleucids, and it's a very strong building roster, a very diverse building roster with lots to offer you. Now the only things that are missing compared to say the Romans is the fact that you can't get the full level roads, you can only go up to paved roads, you can't get highways, so that is the one first thing that's missing. Uh, and then the, uh, the second thing is you can't get to level 5 farming, which I'm pretty sure... What's it called? Farm Estates for the Romans? Um, you can only get to level 4, but at level 4 is plenty. You can get to the level 2 Spice Road, uh, which is great. Fantastic for trade, but we'll talk about that in a, uh, in a little second. So, first things first, you get lots of variety, like I've said already. Uh, you can't get the high rays and the full irrigation, but everything else is fantastic. And you get plenty of options to tailor your cities. Now, remember in RIS, if you want to recruit units, you both need this Seleucid recruitment building and you also need a colony building up to the level of city that you're in. So of your, uh, of your local culture, not your local culture, of your, na uh, sorry, of your culture, not of the local or native culture to the region. So you need these Greek colony buildings as the Seleucids. So remember that you will need that to start with. And we will talk about where you're going to be putting those if you can, um, going through the game into the starting moves. So fantastic roster, a really good roster indeed. Pretty much access to everything that you need, but some notable inclusions in this roster that really give you a decent chance of destroying the corruption across your vast empire are including the secret police network or the execution square line this is a fantastic line that gives you loads of law 20 percent extra law for the secret police network or 10 percent for the execution square only at minor city level a fantastic building for that you also with your temples you get access to the temple of hera which has a law bonus as well. So in your outermost regions, really focus on the Temple of Hera and your Execution Square, and you will do fantastically well destroying that corruption. In terms of your other temples, you also get access to the Temple of Hephaestus, which does upgrade armor and weapons. So for all of you wanting gold armor and weapons, this is the place, this is the... Um, temple you want to be building in your recruitment areas also kind of uh yeah really good really good building for building in your recruitment areas you can build that without having to build a blacksmith and you get bonuses to your weapons and armor so fantastic and then for some of your regions that make the most trade income like seleucia like cyprus if you take it you want to get the temple to taiki or tight taiki tyke uh tyke and um this gives you a trade income bonus. So your temples are a really good mix. You can either go economic, you can go for law, which is predominantly what you want to go for across your empire, and you can go for military as well, which is fantastic. You also get access to the theater, which has public order bonuses and allows games to be held or, or shows, I guess. And of course, you get access to the Ludus Magna and the Academy line. Uh, as well as the irrigation line, up to aqueduct. Not quite all the way up to the Roman level, but up to aqueduct, 
which is fantastic. On top of that, you get the eastern line of the Spice Road and Trade Caravan. This is very, very strong, guys, in your main cities. Something that you want to recruit, build early, early on. I know I said I'd go for farming early on, but this is another line where you really want to focus on. So, building roster is fantastic. Great options all across it. And you can kind of tailor for law. You can tailor for trade income, depending on the region you're in. And without further ado, the thing you've all been waiting for, guys, the starting moves as the Seleucids. So, guys, the starting moves as the Seleucids. How will you start this giant empire now? If you're not into campaign management, this is not the nation for you. This is a nation of campaign management. And you start with around 90 settlements, I believe. We can check that in just one second. But I think it's around 90, spreading all the way from the outskirts of India all the way to Greece itself and Macedonia. So you have a very spread out empire. And I've kind of split this empire into four separate regions and they all have their own priorities we have the northeastern sector pretty much way out kind of very spread out especially this region here right in the middle and really your lowest priority region to start with then we have babylon your most economically dependent region, the region where you're going to make most of your money because of the low corruption near your capital in Seleucia. And for now, I would recommend keeping Seleucia as your capital early game because otherwise all these regions will rebel and you ain't going to have a northeastern region anymore. So Seleucia as the capital, this is the region with low corruption and going to make you all your money. Uh, and then we have the Middle East, Syria, this region here. This is also a very important region, both militarily and economically, because it's not too far from Seleucia, but also very close to the Ptolemies and some potential enemies to the north. Now you have Anatolia, which although it is not your most unstable region public order-wise, it is your most dangerous region in terms of of the enemies that will surround you or could surround you. So, with that in mind, let us talk about how we would start. So, when we start, we can see we have minus 30,000. I think it's just on normal, so I don't I don't know if on hard it's slightly different. Um, I should have put it on hard. Sorry about that. But you start with around minus 30,000. But you have 91 regions, guys. Not all of these regions you are going to keep or want to keep. Remember that. But the first thing that you're going to do, guys, is you're going to go around every, every single one of your provinces. Every single one. Uh, and I would recommend sorting by public order. And going through every single one of these regions, especially the happy ones, and deleting the more expensive unit. We delete those, and we can see that Alexandria Charax is still happy. So what I'm going to do is put that onto very high. And we've st saved a thousand ducats already. Ducats? I'm not playing EU4. A thousand denarii already. <laughs> now you want to do this through every single one. Of course, I'm not going to do this again. I've already done it in my campaign twice. Uh, I've done this. Adjusted the tax rate through all my regions and deleted units. So if you want to see me doing that, you can. Uh, but that is something that you want to do in your own time. Should take you about 10 minutes. It doesn't take too long. But make sure when you're doing this that you are deleting the more expensive unit. Always the more expensive unit. Apart from in specific areas where you are going to militarily expand. So all of these ones where you're not going to start taking a, and going north or south to fight. They do not need two units in here. Why have we got a Hoplites that has an 874? 874. It hurts. To say that, guys, um, upkeep cost. That's going. That is gone. Now you have Prodromoy just in there. Um, there we are. And then you can put the uh, tax rate up. So you want to do that throughout your regions. Special things to note. In this region, by Sardis, what I would recommend is that you, in fact, rather than destroying all of your units, is consolidate them into an army. So all of these units ha here, especially these guys, these merc mercenary Thracians are fantastic early game. A very strong mercenary unit. Um, 
get them all into Sardis, and then we'll talk about wars before as well. And um, so that region, this region down here, probably gather all your forces together. You also start with a bit of an army that is led by Antiochus Sota, your faction leader. Um, so gather him, gather a few of your troops, uh, and you shall have an army over there. The same thing in Syria. Gather yourselves an army, uh, specifically from Antioch and these surrounding regions. Bring them down south, ready to fight the Ptolemies. So you have a bit of an army there already. That uh, Those are the two places that you w don't want to do exactly what I've said. Delete all the units. Everywhere else, delete the units. Up here, I would say get an army together of about five or six and then delete the rest. This is a very unstable and unhappy region. So you're going to have to be very careful about how you balance that. Uh, and then out here in the sticks, you may not be able to delete all of these units, as you can see. Unhappy places. That is why when you go through this, you organize them by public order. And all of these regions that are unhappy, make sure you don't delete the units and put them onto low tax rate to try and make them happy. Everywhere else, delete the units and raise the tax rate. Does that all make sense? I hope so, guys. I hope so. So we've dealt with the first initial thing that you want to do with your economy. Um, deleting the units and putting the tax rate up. Now, once you have done this, once you have got down to these very unhappy units like we talked about, unhappy places that we talked about, the next thing that you want to do is make all of these places happy. You can see 56% in Bizpaltis, not good at all. How are we going to do that? Well, we have our secret weapon. It is called the Shrine to Hera. Okay, it's that one eventually. Uh, you get a bonus 10% public order from this, guys. 5% of which is law, which shall help your economy as well. Go through all of these, build a Shrine to Hera in all of them. Or if there is another law option available, a happiness option, build that as well to keep them happy. But there are three or four regions which I believe you probably will do better to just abandon. So, let's talk about those quickly. So, you've made all the unhappy regions happy by building that Shrine to Hera to start with. However, these two regions here, Maronea and Lysimachia, I would like you to do this. Very high... And delete everything. Get the money from here. Delete everything. Because twofold. Twofold. To this. You will not be able to keep hold of these regions very easily. On top of that, although you are surrounded by rebels right now, you will not be surrounded by rebels for very long. The um, Antigonids have a stronghold over here and will come east. And the Thracians are up here, as you can see. Just at a drissa there, ready to pounce. So you do not want to be at war with the Antigonids or Thracians to start with. So I would say these regions are very much easily um, regions that you want to get rid of. Now, remember, this is tactical. You can come back and take these later. But for now, do not keep hold of them. Any regions over here, I believe, I think it's um, Alexandria Prophasia or is it... No, I think it's Zranka. Zranka is another one that you pretty much want to just... There's no chance you're making this happy uh, for very long because of the culture, etc. So let's go north and abandon that. So those are the three regions that you kind of want to leave behind and not really be bothered. Everywhere else, fight tooth and nail to keep them because eventually they'll be happy and eventually you'll be able to uh, integrate them into your culture, etc. Now... We talked about economy. We've talked about the regions that we're going to destroy. We've talked about the places where we're going to get our armies together. Now, let's talk about our first opening moves militarily. Militarily, we have Antiochus up here. He is a decent leader. 2-2-2, two, 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 not amazing. Um, but he starts with a very good army, including elephants. Now, if you can add these Thracians into that army and some of the Theroporite, you will be doing fantastically. And once you have a decent enough army here, you want to march north. There are three or four settlements in this region up here. Two of which are rebel, 
and two of which you're already at war with and are Bithynian settlements. Now, Bithynia is not that strong. Bithynia is not strong at all. So I would recommend, as the only nation that you start at war with, the only nation, if as we can see, Bithynia, we start allied with a lot as well. But the only nation that we are at war with to start with is Bithynia. So go and take them out. I mean, you can take them out just with this first army without having to gather them to start with. So I'd probably actually recommend that first and send all your other troops up second going to join them. Take out Bithynia straight away and you've got your first enemy out of the way. And this sort of tip of Anatolia um, squared off. So that is the first military action you want to take. Now, ideally, what you want to do is try and avoid war with the Ptolemies for as long as possible. The way you can do this is by not bordering them, uh, which is impossible. <laughs> or just fighting other enemies or finding some sort of peace with them and trade rights with them to start with. Um, and trying to keep the relationship there. But eventually, they will attack you. And when they do, this army should hopefully have cleared up this region and will be on the way down back south to Sardis for retraining. So once you've cleared up this region, send them back to Sardis for retraining. And I would say at that point, you are very likely ready to fight the Ptolemies. This region here itself, they don't have too much of an army and you want to square off Anatolia. And when you have this whole region, you will be very powerful. So that is basically the sort of plan you want to take. Now, in amongst this, what can throw a spanner in the works? Let us just toggle Fog of War for one second so I can show you what we are talking about. Here's Bithynia, by the way. They just have these two settlements. So you want to take Bithynia. Then I would take uh, Chalcodon and Chios. Um, and then also look to, to try and take Dor Dorylion before moving down south uh, back. You will lose these two settlements like we talked about. That is no problem whatsoever. You might get the Greek city-states coming out of one of these. Uh, obviously, as I say, move your troops out of here. I think I just disbanded those ones. Um, and then you want to come down here and start taking all this Ptolemaic land in this area. They've got a lot of settlements down here. And they're going to make you rich. So take them. And when they do attack you or you attack them after you've squared off this northern edge of Anatolia, you can move that southern army that I talked about earlier, either by ship or by land, down to the south and just start chaining through the uh, Ptolemaic cities here. They're nicely in a row. And these cities are great. They're going to make you money. And some of them... Uh, any of them Greek? I don't believe so, actually, to be fair. Don't believe any of them are Greek. Yeah, these are Phoenician. Um, but yeah, it's going to be great. And you're not too far from Antioch. That is going to be your recruitment hub. So let's talk about our recruitment hubs. So, Sardis, you want to make your recruitment hub. In this game, like I've talked about, you need your recruitment, uh, Seleucid recruitment, and you need your colony for, or colony level Greek up to the highest level it can go. So, uh, you want to make Sardis your recruitment hub because it already had a fourth level colony. And the same thing with Antioch. It has a fifth level colony. It's already actually uh, Greek native culture, interestingly enough. Um, but it has Seleucid recruitment as well and some decent barracks, etc. That's going to be your recruitment hub over here. In the north, you want to make uh, Zadrakata, very likely your recruitment hub. Um, these regions up here, none of them are particularly good. Uh, but in, in Babylon, in Babylon, you don't really need a recruitment hub. So, those are the moves that you want to make to start with. Who can throw a spanner in the works? The Galatians, very early on, can throw a spanner in the works quite quickly. Um, but they are not a too strong an enemy. They are a barbarian faction. You shouldn't have too much of a problem fighting them. So don't worry about them too much. Predominantly uh, focus on the Ptolemies. You also have Cappadocia, who is your ally, but may betray you. And we have Armenia up here. Sorry, Armenia. Can we find an Armenian settlement? Who are your ally as well. And then we have Atropatine over here, who's neutral. But these guys can all throw a spanner in the works. And if they do, that is fine. Don't worry. Ptolemies are always your biggest enemy and your main rival. 
So when you get to war with the Ptolemies, focus wholly on them because the AI is quite slow at conquesting settlements. So even if, say, Galatians declare war on you early and take Pessinus, it's going to take them five, six, seven turns to go and take the next settlement. So don't worry too much. Come down and smash through the Ptolemies really aggressively and quickly. Really aggressively and quickly. And you'll have this region in your bag. Also come down south through this region. And there's a lot of cities in this region that you can take relatively quickly. A couple uh, every two turns, really. One a turn uh, if you can chain through them and you have enough garrison troops. So you've got a lot of options ahead of you. What I would recommend is that Anatolia is your first massive project. Your first massive regional project is to conquer the whole of Anatolia uh, in its entirety eventually. And that starts with the northern tip, um, uh, continues with the, Greek, uh, with the Greek area of uh, the Ptolemaic area down here. And then, depending on your RNG, continues with the Galatians, the Cappadocians, Armenians, whichever one of these declares war on you, continue your conquest there. And your second priority is then taking out the Ptolemies all the way to Alexandria. Now, one thing to note, Alexandria is Greek. So when you uh, come down south and you bust through these settlements, when you get down here, you have already a pre-made recruitment hub that's a large city at the start of the game. So once you've taken Alexandria, you should be able to recruit pretty much what you want in Alexandria. And that is fantastic. You can come south and start destroying the rest of the Ptolemies. By the time you've taken Alexandria, the Ptolemies should be pretty much dead. Like they don't have much left. So do not worry about them too much. That'll be fine. So that is the plan of your starting moves. A couple of things to remember, guys, when you are building, like we've talked about. Early game economic buildings. You want to build, um, in Seleucia, you want to build the trade caravan. If we look at this, 1,200 one up from a 1,800 building, very strong. Same thing in Sardis and Antioch, you can build this, and Babylon, you can build that building. Very strong building early on. But remember, all the time when you're building, for example, this reduces your tax income. So always balance this out. You can see my tax is reduced by 12 by that, but it's... 100 times more money it's making me. So that's a great building to build. But say we built, for example, the Execution Square, which actually does nothing because there's no corruption here. Um, I'd just be losing money on taxes for some extra happiness. So you always want to balance this out and make sure that you're doing well. But like I said, make sure you're focusing on the unhappy regions, making them happy first priority. Then your second priority is going to be to build this area up each turn economically, starting with farming and roads, moving on to then trade buildings. If that all makes sense, I hope you enjoyed that. that I know that was in-depth quite a lot, and we've gone through a lot of different concepts here. But remember, focusing on the Ptolemies can never do you any harm. So, I hope you enjoyed, guys. Thank you very much much for watching. It was a pleasure. Please like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments down below how these tips helped you out or whether they didn't help you out, of course. Um, let, me now let me know down in the comments below. And then I will see you hopefully on the Seleucid campaign. And I will see you all on the next video.